say our confession together. I am here on purpose because I have a purpose. My heart is open. My mind is ready to receive because God is not finished with me yet. My best days are right in front of me, and I have victory in my life because Jesus lives in me. Give him a big praise, and you can be seated. He's worthy. Amen. Hallelujah. I have to tell you that um, I don't think I could ever be one of those movie stars that has those lights right there in your eyes. Because um, you can all be praying for me. I get these lines that start squiggling across my eyes from those lights. And uh, so I, if I take a Tylenol, it disappears. I'm believing for healing. But until it happens, since I'm preaching today and I have to read the Bible, I have to get that thing stopped. Amen. Father, I thank you for your presence here today. I thank you that you are more than enough for whatever we need. You said that you are El Shaddai. El Shaddai means more than enough. And so I thank you for every need that's represented here today. By the words that have been spoken, by the worship and the entering into your presence, by this word that you've given me to share today, and by the message that Sue gave every person in this building and those watching online, will hear something that will cause them to draw closer to you, that they will see you as their source, their only one that can but always will take care and provide for them. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Hi. I remember you, Andy. Um, we, we in this church, you know, we've been talking about God's children, that we have a covenant. Everybody say a covenant. And the Bible really is divided between the Old Covenant and the New Testament, which they call it testament, but it's really covenant. Everybody say covenant. covenant. Old Covenant, New Covenant. N Old Testament, New Testament, sometimes people don't really know what that means. But a covenant, as we've talked about, is something that God designed to connect us to him in this life that we would be able to hear his voice, that we would not only be able to know what God wants to do, but through the grace of God, through God's ability working through us, we would be able to actually accomplish those things. And so I want to talk to you today about something. Um, we're still on God makes covenant with his people, but I don't know how many of you have seen the movie um, Sound, what's, it, what's the new? Sound of Freedom. Okay. It talks about how child trafficking has become such a huge industry. Everybody say industry. It's a money-making industry. That's what motivates evil. Everybody say evil. Remember the scripture in Matthew 6 that says you cannot serve God and mammon? It doesn't say the church is supposed to be poor. It says that you have to make a choice in the church of who you will serve. And all of us need money. But we have a covenant. Everybody say a covenant. With El Shaddai who said, I will be more than enough for you. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory, not a according to what I've done or ever will do, but according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That's why the world needs Jesus Christ. Uh, today I want to talk to you a little bit about God's children are not for sale. I don't know how many of you saw the movie, but in the movie, you know, the most, I think, poignant so sound that he made or words that he said was, God's children are not for sale. Everybody say they're not for sale. Oh, that movie. I was thinking about all God's children. Everybody say, I'm not for sale. You know, the enemy has so many lures out there today. Not just for young people, for older people. How many of you know people who used to be in church who are not there anymore because of the lure? You know, I'm not a fisher person. I fish some. Andy's on a fishing trip right now. But, you know, you put a bait on there to lure the fish. The devil has a lot of bait. And he baits the body of Christ as well as the unbeliever. Unbelievers, people who haven't received Jesus, have no weaponry against the power of the devil. 
Only through the blood of Jesus are we able to overcome. Everybody say overcome. And that's because we have a covenant, a covenant with God, a promise, if you will. It, it's a con, like a contract in the world, but this has security way beyond any contract that could legally be uh, whatever given by anybody. More important than the laws of this land, although we're to obey the laws of this land, the laws of this land are still subject to God. The Psalms say that God owns the world and everything in it. Everything in it. But when Adam and Eve ate that fruit in the garden, disobeyed. Everybody say disobeyed. When they disobeyed God, they became slaves of evil. They became uh, Satan's property until they would have received Jesus. I mean, and they didn't have that in that day. We do. Everybody say, we do. The world today is controlled by evil. It's, it, it's very clear. We see it. We saw it in that movie. If you've seen that movie, we see it in everyday life. My concern is beyond just these children, which breaks my heart because I have great-grandchildren. All I could see was, you know, what do we do? How can we help? But also... All of you are God's children. All my friends are God's. God is the creator of all things. And so all people belong to God, but they have to choose him because of what happened in the garden. And then they choose a covenant. Everybody say a covenant. And they are no longer slaves to what the enemy wants. Eve and Adam were free in that garden to walk with God, talk with God. It says that even God was walking in the cool of the evening when he came to them and said their names, and they said that they were hiding because they were fearful because they were naked. They would have never known that except that they had eaten from the tree of good and evil. Everybody say evil. And so I was, you know, I was just wandering through life making one mistake after another till I received Jesus. Didn't even know I had an enemy. Everybody say, there is an enemy. And he is the one that tempted Eve, and he got control of people. He still has control of people. Until I was born again, he had control of me. I didn't know I had an enemy, but I was tempted to do things that I shouldn't be doing. How many of you know that's true? How many of you are glad you're saved? How many of you are glad you know Jesus? I was not in that point in my life able to overcome anything. I was just looking for somebody to help me. How many of you have ever been in that place? But I didn't know that it wasn't going to be a man. I didn't know it wasn't going to be my parents. I didn't know it wasn't going to be my job until I knew Jesus. And then I knew that I had a source greater than anything else in the world. And then I learned about covenant. And I want to talk to you today because I think a lot of people are waiting to receive Jesus today because they're trying to get right. How many of you have ever had somebody say, well, you know, I'm not doing the right thing, so I, I probably can't receive Jesus. This covenant is not based on our performance. This covenant is based on Jesus' walk to Calvary and the blood that he shed. So anybody can come to Jesus. And all of us that are Christians, when we make mistakes, I don't know about anybody else in here, but I make a lot of them on a regular basis. I still am growing in some things. And when I do, I can ask forgiveness. Everybody say, ask forgiveness. Because Jesus said he would forgive my sins. And so it says he's, he's just to forgive our sins. He understands who we are. And we have a covenant. Everybody say, a covenant. And so when we begin to get in these places where we're accused, you know, it says the devil's the accuser of the brethren. And uh, how many of you know today that you've been accused every now and then? How many of you probably were accused this morning before you got here? <laughs> I'm accused. I am accused all the time by the enemy. And I've learned to know that's not God. The more you know God, the more you know that's not the right voice. But until you know, everybody say until you know. You have to know that you are all right. You are righteous. Everybody say righteous. That just simply means you don't do everything right, but you are in right standing 
with God. To be in right standing with God means that you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and his blood has put you in a position that you now walk in a covenant with God, and he has promised you whatever you read in this word belongs to you because this is his promise. This is his word. And so I want to read to you this scripture because I didn't understand this when I first got saved. For he made him who knew no sin. So God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That means it's not about what we can do. It's about what God already did. Turn to your neighbor and say, I am righteous. If you know Jesus Christ, you are righteous. Uh, a lot of people have trouble with this because they'll say, well, they don't act like a Christian. Well, I, God showed me and neither do you. Well, that was a new thought. The longer you walk with God, the more you become like him. So in order to walk in the authority and dominion of that covenant, you have to be cleansed. Of a lot of things uh, you've all heard my story you know I smoked uh, kept one lit just in case God told me to quit you know because I thought if he tells me to quit I at least want to go out smoking and uh, you know and and that you know that that's who I was I was born again and I was still smoking I was praying in tongues I was still smoking I was praying with people and casting out devils then I'd go rejoice, have an iced tea, and smoke a cigarette. <laughs> Hallelujah, God's good. And God did not strike me dead because he knew my heart. A lot of people like to judge by exactly black and white. I'm not saying it's gray with God, but I am saying mercy prevails in the kingdom of God. And mercy has to prevail in the world we're living in today. We have a covenant. Everybody say, I have a covenant. Just like my husband doesn't divorce me if I don't fix the right dinner. I mean, because I don't fix dinner. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that because we came to your restaurant. That's where I met you. And uh, so, you know, uh, I have this restaurant ministry, I call it. That way I get to go out to eat all the time. And I just tell Pastor Bill it's what God's called me to. And uh, so, you know, just in case somebody needs prayer, I'll be there. And uh, it's happened many times, incidentally, because at Cracker Barrel, they come get me and tell me who needs prayer. That lady over there is going to need some prayer. I, Hallelujah, I'm on it. Uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. Serving Jesus is fun. Serving Jesus is a joy. I'm not the one who's going to do things. God's going to do them. I'm just here this is just me, and I do whatever God tells me, and then he does something so supernatural that, that the person is aware that God is good. Everybody say, God is good, and that we need him. And so if you want to be righteous, you have to receive Jesus because your righteousness, your right standing with God comes through Jesus Christ. Now, I want to talk to you today because I believe a lot of people live in slavery who are born again because they have listened to the accuser. Unsaved people don't necessarily get accused by the devil because he likes them to stay where they're at. You're okay. You could do this is okay. He doesn't want them to know what's wrong. But a believer, we all have that thing in us that say, I shouldn't do this. I mean, I knew smoking. I mean, I had a doctor tell me if God wanted you to smoke, he would have put a chimney on your head. So, and I had bronchitis, and I was sick all the time. So I knew it wasn't good for me. But the power to overcome came through Jesus, came through his mercy, his love, because of covenant. And so slaves, I, I know people who are slaves to their job. They're afraid to quit their job because they don't have enough money. That if they quit... They won't have enough money. Your job is not your source. My job is not my source. Jesus is my source. If the Holy Spirit tells me to do something and I obey, I will not be a slave. If I don't obey, I will be a slave. To whatever that is in my life, fear, to doubt, to unbelief, to intimidation by people. I was very intimidated 
before I receive Jesus, I still have to put a guard up on that because people who are very strong and, you know, they just say something and, and I'll, I, I want to go, oh, sure, okay, instead of standing for what I know to be the truth. Maybe you're not like that. Maybe you're not made that way. But intimidation is from the pit of hell. If you're intimidated today to step out and be who God's called you to be, that's from the enemy. He doesn't want to lose control in whatever that is. And we become slaves. Everybody say, we become slaves. When I first got saved, it says in Romans, and uh, I came from a background, uh, a denominational background, and I remember hearing this scripture, and uh, I didn't really, I didn't know if there'd be hope for me. It says, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They've all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. Not, no, not one. And then in verse 21 of Romans 3, it says, But now the righteousness of God. Everybody say, the righteousness of God. Who, is the, who has the righteousness of God in here? Yeah. Apart from the law, which was the old covenant, was very legal. It had to be because they had no savior in the old covenant. Jesus had to come for them to be saved from sin. That's what he did. And so apart from the law is revealed, it says. How, what is this righteousness? Being witnessed by the law and prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith. Everybody say through faith. Through faith. The righteousness of God. Being in right standing with God is not based on our performance. That's what that's saying right there in that scripture. The righteousness of God through faith. Everybody say faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. I didn't look righteous when I first got saved. I mean, not very many churches would have allowed me to smoke my cigarettes and cast out devils. That's not righteous looking. But I was righteous because I was in right standing with God. I had things that had to be worked out in my life. This is why unbelievers stay away from the church because they feel guilty. They feel like they're not good enough. This is why Christians go do something and don't come back because they feel guilty. Everybody say guilty. There is therefore now no condemnation, no guilt to those who are in Christ Jesus, who are led by the Spirit and not by the flesh. My flesh will do things it shouldn't, but my spirit man is solid in Jesus Christ. Amen? And it holds me. I've wavered at times, but it's there. Everybody say it's there. It's a covenant. And so it goes on, and it talks about justification just as if I never sinned, it says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, we're going from old covenant law to new covenant explanation of what we have. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And then it goes on down, and it says um, that it's by faith. Everybody say, by faith. It's not by works. It's by faith. Yes, my works will show I have faith, but I'm not saved by my works. So being good all the time does not indicate whether I'm saved or not. I have people say they're going to hell. And I think, well, you know what? We're going to have to get you in the pulpit because how do you know they're going to hell? The Bible says only God knows the spirit of a man. So as long as we're here and we have breath, we need to be reaching out to those that are in that situation, not judging situations. Now, see, it's going to get quiet in this church <laughs> because I'm guilty too, and God has been speaking to me. If you're going to work for me, that's not the way I think. Everybody say, if we work for God, we have to think like God. And so it goes on, and it says, I want to read you chapter 6. I never understood this, but I do now. It says, what then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? People were wrestling with, um, what is sin? You know, and, and, and so it goes on. It says, do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey, 
whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. Everybody say it's a choice. It's a choice. And so what the Bible's saying here is um, they use the word slaves with righteousness. But I want to read to you what was in my commentary, and I thought it was so good. I think I have it somewhere here. Um, it was talking about obedience, and it said to the one that you serve, you are a slave. If you obey the things the devil wants you to obey, then you are a slave to that thing. I am, I am tired of young people being addicted to drugs. Up to here and over the top. It's not God. And the church has authority. Those, those young people are slaves. People who have different lifestyles. That's, that's not God. That's being a slave. Everybody say a slave. When you understand the truth of what the enemy's doing, then you have authority to do something about it. But what the devil does to the church gets them looking at themselves. Well, you know, I've done a few things myself, so probably shouldn't be praying for them. I ought to be working on me. We can do both. Everybody say, we can do both. We have to take a stand for our righteousness. Then it goes on and it says, but thanks be to God that though you were slaves of sin, that's anybody who's not born again, is a slave to sin. Because without Jesus, there's no power to overcome. Then it goes on and it says, uh, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. In other words, we've been changed. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. What that means is, and let me help you understand this, because slavery doesn't, everybody say this. Instead of being a slave to sin, say that. Instead of being a slave to sin, now I am obedient in righteousness. Amen? Because that's what it is. We begin to obey the thing inside us that we know we can't overcome by ourselves. I may be just preaching to the choir today, but I've had some things in my life I could not get over by myself. And so at one moment, I'm a slave to what I want to do, don't want to do. And the next minute, I'm overcoming. You know, if the thing stays out of my way that I have trouble with, I am all good. How many of you know, get rid of a bunch of people in your life, you, things would be swell right now. Everything would be really great. You know, if I could just get rid of so-and-so, I mean, uh, my life would be much better. Or maybe if you could get rid of your boss. You know, I mean, if, if I'd have been promoted instead of them, you know, we get into all those things. Well, if we step out of understanding who we are, we end up in the enemy's camp. And we become a slave. Everybody say a slave. But we're not slaves. We are slaves of righteousness. Or because of righteousness, if we obey, we are free. It's the opposite. We are free. Everybody say we are free. He whom the sun sets free is free indeed. We're going to go there in a minute. Now, this is why it's important. It says the last verse of chapter 6 in Romans. If you want to know a lot about covenant, read Romans and Hebrews. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. That gift is the gift of righteousness. Everybody say righteousness. Right standing with God. If, if I every day only did what I felt I was worthy of in the natural, it would push me back from doing the things that God's called me to do. But if I do what I'm worthy of because I'm righteous in Christ Jesus, I can get people set free by the power of God. I can speak words that will produce life. I can lay hands on the sick, the Bible says, and cast out devils. And I can expect those things to happen when I'm not counting on my goodness or my ability, but I'm counting on my covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Sometimes I sleep with my Bible. When I especially go out of the country, I keep my Bible on my bed. You say, well, what's your Bible going to do? It's the word of God. And sometimes I need a vision of what I believe right there with me. 
even when the enemy is pressing hard against me. By the way, my headache's gone. I thought the devil was going to be defeated on that today because I stood here last night for an hour and worshipped, but then those lights fired up. I am overcoming that in Jesus' name. I'm not going to not do what God called me to do because the lights caused me not to see. I, I, for a while here, I've been preaching with going on. The devil is bound. Everybody says bound. And what we see in the natural is not what it is according to the kingdom of God. Now you say, why is she preaching like this? Because we are in a season in this world today. Yes, that, those children are being taken on a daily basis. So are sons and daughters of believers being taken today by the devil. And we are drawing a line in the sand. We have a covenant. They will follow God. Everybody say, my children will follow God. I will follow God. My friends will follow God. The people I associate with, no matter what they look like, will serve God. That's the way I believe it's going to get coming and going forward. It says it'll get darker and darker, but we'll get brighter and brighter. Listen, the enemy's working hard to take people's lights out. And he's doing it through people we love. How many of you have people you love? And then, you know, I mean, some nights I, I think I'm going to have to stay awake all night to pray for all of them. There's so many. I mean, my list is getting longer. But glory to God when they all get saved. Y'all are going to have to sit in their extra room. Because they're going to be sitting right here getting saved on Sunday morning. It's coming. It is coming. It is upon us. It is upon us. And I believe Jesus is coming. But boy, when he comes, I pray to God I'm doing what he told me to do that day. <laughs> because he has called me into service for such a time as this. He has called every one of you into service for such a time as this. But he's causing people to shrink back because they do not know their covenant. And they've started looking at themselves. And how many of you know, on a good day, you know, maybe at the end of the day, we don't have to say, Father, forgive me for whatever I did today that I don't even remember. I remember my mom would say that at night. She would pray, Lord, forgive me if I missed anything. And I'm going to sleep now. And so you're in charge, and I'll get back with you in the morning. <laughs> That's the way my mom told me she prayed every night. Well, she raised us. She probably had to pray like that. And, uh, but, you know, we, we're not responsible for everything, but we are responsible to live the life that Jesus Christ paid the, the, the price for. I want to go to John 8 because um, I want to say this today, and I don't know where everybody is here today. But um, I want to read this. Because this is what you need to know. You have an adversary. I have an adversary. Some of the things we do, we do because we have an old nature. How many of you wake up and you think, who was that? You have, how many of you have ever done anything and thought, who, who was that? That was the old man that still lives in there that every now and then rises up. And then don't you just think, oh, hope nobody saw that. You know, uh, that's the old man. Everybody has an old man. Everybody who's born again has a new man. And that new man is increasing on a daily basis. I want to show you this. Jesus said in John 8, 37, I know, I know that you are Abraham's descendants. And I believe this is, this is something that the body of Christ really needs. Because a lot of people know they're Christian. They, they know or they believe they're Christian, but they have no personal relationship with Jesus Christ. They just, they, they have a title, but they have no authority to go with it. Because this is what has to happen. Abraham's, Jesus is speaking to the Jews. You are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak what I've seen with my father, and you do what you've seen with your father. He's talking about God and the enemy. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. And Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. We see things in the church today 
that are not according to the Word of God. There are places where things are being taught that are not the Word of God. And they think they are God's children. Everybody say deception. You have to know the covenant. Everybody say you have to know your covenant. And it says, uh, but now you see, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But you, do, you seek to kill me, a man who's told you the truth. Everybody say truth, truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to them, we were not born of fornication. We have a father, God. They start defending themselves. And Jesus said, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself. He sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my words. What does it say in John 10.10? 10? If you flip just forward a little bit further. My children hear my voice. Everybody say a child of God. My children hear my voice and they follow me. Everybody say follow him. So what he's saying is, you are coming from another place. And then he gets so bold and he says this. You are of your father, the devil. Now, these are highly religious people. These are people who believe that they are God's people. And he just said, you're of your father, the devil. What do you think that would be like on a Sunday morning in church? And then it says, and the desires of your father you want to do. The people who are doing child trafficking have a father. It's the devil. That's evil. Everybody say evil. If you don't know, devil is D-E-V-I-L, devil. He is an evil devil. It's in his name. God's name is in that name. It's Jehovah. It's God Almighty. It is Jehovah God Almighty, the Lord of hosts. And so he goes on and says, and, and you are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you do. He was a murderer from the beginning, does not stand in truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks, when he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Amen? I believe a lot of people in the body of Christ are believing a lie right now. They believe they're who they are based on what they do. They're not believing. They have no idea that they could be free. Everybody say, he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Jesus begins this whole thing. If you abide in my word, the Bible, the covenant that I've given you, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. Everybody say truth. truth. And the truth shall make you free. The Internet does not necessarily have truth. And the generation we're living in now, everything is the Internet. I, I've, I'm with people, you know, and I'm, I'm especially around young people. And they just get on that internet. If you say something, they look it up, and whatever so-and-so said, that's, that's it. Everybody say, that's not necessarily true. How do you know what's true? By the word of God and hearing his voice. And what he's saying is, you do not listen because you do not know me. It says in John 10.10, 10, the sheep, the children of God, will know his voice. How many of you are glad you can hear the voice of God? Some days I don't even know if I hear the voice of God. And I have to go back and say, God, you said I hear the voice of God. Because uh, there's situations and things I have to decide. So do all of you. But the truth is, everybody say the truth is, John 10.10. 10. And I'm going to leave you with this today. This is what Jesus said. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. Could I say that to you? He knows you. You say, uh-oh. Yeah, he knows everything. But he loves us no matter what. He's in a covenant. He made a promise. I will never leave you or forsake you. I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. He's with me today. No matter where I go, he will be with me. No matter where you're at today, he will always be with you. 
and he'll give you courage because it says, it goes on and says, the thief in verse 10 does not come. That's the devil. Everybody say the devil. The devil does not come except to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. When things happen, get out John 10.10 10 and John 10.27. Lord, I thank you that I hear your voice. And who is this? Is this the thief or is it you? When you hear things about yourself, God, is this you saying this? I know I did wrong. I repent. I'm sorry. Is it you who's accusing me? Or is it the thief? The one who wants to steal my life. Steal my hope. Steal my plans. Steal my future. That's what young people are believing. Because they don't know. In Jesus' name. God's covenant will be preached in every schoolhouse, in any doctor's office, in a lawyer's office, wherever. You know, I love all of you, and I share every Sunday here, and there are a lot of you, you know, you've been here, and thank God for your faithfulness and all the prayers. But I really want to see people who've never really had an opportunity to really know who Jesus is. And that really, as a young person, I would have probably taken a much better path if I hadn't just been what I called a Christian going to church. If I'd have known that I, somebody was going to try to tear my life apart and they were going to blame me for it when really it was the thief stealing my destiny. How many of you have people like that? Let's stand. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray today for, I pray today for people that we know in this church first. And maybe it's you. Maybe you're here today and you say, well, I've, I've never really, uh, really said to the Lord, I'm laying all this down and I want you to show me who you are. I want you to take over my life. When Indy prayed that prayer uh, with Pastor Bill, that was standing in the middle of the Olive Garden. The Bible says, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father. You know, even me at the beginning when he started, you know, saying this to every server we had, I thought, oh, I hope they don't get embarrassed. I thought God was going to have to smack me upside my face wake up this isn't about embarrassment this is about eternity this is a life and so uh, I pray today for all of you that have young people older people in your life my sister goes to the nursing home you know that's probably going to be their last chance for most people in a nursing home and my sister prays with them I don't know how many we're in now are we in how many are we in 15 nursing homes. I think she has a bigger congregation than we do. Now, they don't all know who they are. They don't all know exactly what's going on. But they do know when the Spirit of God shows up. And they begin to open their heart. We're believing they all make heaven, every single last one of them. If you're in this room today, you're not sure today needs to be the day. Or if you've run away from God, Please let this be the day that you understand he is waiting for you. He is waiting for you to go. And so if the Bible says it's very simple, just like the prayer that Bill prayed with Indy. It says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you may not have full understanding. You may not even know why you're saying it. You just know you need something better. That's how my husband got saved. Nothing else is working, he told the person. And so he prayed the prayer. But when he did, everything in his life changed. Everything can change in your life today. If you're here, is there anybody here who isn't sure? I'm not believing anybody's going to leave here today. But if you did, I want you to stand before Jesus. 
as his brother or sister, because that's what it says. You're joint heirs with him. Is there anybody here before we pray that would say, I, I need to come back or I, I need Jesus today? Anybody? There will be a day where there will, this altar will be filled. And so will other churches because the things are shaking. Do you feel like things are shaking? God says he's going to shake everything that can be shaken. Say, it won't be me. <laughs> we can't be shaken because we have a covenant. Amen? Let's pray. I'm going to pray for each of you, and then I'm going to pray a prayer, and I want you to repeat after me. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name for every person here today, those watching. I pray for their family, their friends. I pray for especially young people that today are trying to figure out what is it that I need to have security, to have, have what they need in their life, to be stable, to be uh, free from drugs, free from alcohol, free from those things that the enemy now has them slaves to. We believe, Lord, for deliverance. We believe for instant, instant deliverance in people's lives to be set free and then begin to be filled up with the truth of your word. Today, Lord, as we pray, I ask you that every heart, every heart that's praying this prayer, whether it's online or here in this room, that you will see it and you, by your word and your promise, I know you will receive them right where they are. Not when they get better, not, not even today if they go out and make a mistake or even go into things they know they shouldn't. You will be right there. Once they ask you, you will be there. Let's say this together. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he died for my sin. Thank you because of Jesus, I can be free. I desire to be free. Free from sin, free from slavery of any kind in my life. I give you my heart. I yield my life to you. I make a decision today that Jesus will be my Lord and my Savior and my Deliverer and my Healer in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Well, give God praise today. He's a good God. We always leave here with a confession. And uh, I encourage all of you, have a journal. Write down what God is saying to you, even though it, it may not make sense at the time. And then get a confession of what you need. Find a scripture in the Bible. It's easy to do. Look at the Bible app, not the internet for how to do it. Look in the Bible app because it will give you a scripture. If you put in the word you need, a scripture will come. And begin to say that over yourself. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Have you all got that one today? I am saved by grace through faith. And I have everything that I have need of because Jesus is Lord. And I belong to him. Amen. Let's say this. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, I am steadfast immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing my labor is not in vain. Amen. Go and be blessed. Hallelujah. Give God a big praise. We want to thank you so much for joining us at Victory Online. Our hope is that today's message encouraged and blessed you. If you are looking for additional ways to connect to Victory or you would like more information on what we believe, you can find all of that at our website at victorylafayette.org. If you would like to sow a seed into furthering the vision of victory where we share the love, acceptance, and forgiveness of Jesus with everyone, you can do that on our website as well under the giving tab. Most importantly, if you prayed the prayer of salvation at the end of today's message, we are so excited to be a part of this new beginning. We want to provide you with additional resources to help you grow in this new relationship with Jesus Christ. Please contact us 
through our website. There are various ways to connect with us, as I mentioned before, or give us a call in our offices, 765-447-7777. We would love to personally pray with you and again, provide you with those additional resources free of charge. We want to thank you again so much for joining us at Victory Online, and we hope to see you again soon.